Hello and welcome everyone. I just want to say hello to everybody that's coming in. Hey Gardner, Josh, you're rating me. <laughs> Thank you guys. Gray man, I see you. Steve Essex, hello. The Big Blue House Homestead, Heritage Heart Homestead, Dr. Prepper. Thank you, Mark. You're awesome. You didn't have to do that though. I appreciate it. Stars Prepper. The Milkmaid, hello and welcome. See, I'm scrolling back up in the chat a little bit. Joe Morgan, hello, how's it going? I think that's everybody. Oh, we got a couple more coming in. Hello and welcome. Britain, oh my goodness, it just jumped. Britain Farms Homestead, hello and welcome. Monty, Klingon Princess, Dr. Prepper. You would have came anyways. Miscellaneous, hello, Bella, John H. Hello, hello, and welcome. So today, if you've seen the thumbnail, it's Tincture Tuesday. And today I am doing peppermint. Hey, Lady Hammer, Moonlight Gypsy. Sorry, traffic is going crazy. It is nuts. Hey, Emily L. So... This is really simple. All you need is a mason jar and a lid and some, I've got 80 proof vodka here. You could use 90 proof, whatever you can get your hands on. So basically all you do, this is super simple, like I said, is you just take your mint leaves off and put it in the mason jar. I went and harvest this mint early this morning and I went ahead and gave it a good rinse. And then it's just been sitting here drying off a little bit, waiting for this live. Harvey Black, hello. Dutch Off Grid, how are you doing? Long time. It's good to see you. So the whole purpose of Tincture Tuesday is to help not only teach myself, but to teach others to um, stock an apothecary cabinet. And my thought process, why not stock an apothecary uh, cabinet when you have all these herbs in the garden or these wild edibles and stock it up while you can. And then later, if you need it, you'll have it. Hopefully people are stocking up on herbal books, wild edible books. And then once you have your apothecary cabinet stocked, then you can go back to those books and reference them and just pull out some of your dry herbs or your tinctures and follow the recipes. <laughs> Hello to anybody new coming into the chat that I haven't seen. If I miss you, I'm sorry. Hopefully my chat here will say hello to you as well. Muzzle Flash, welcome Moonchild. Hello, Ginger Ninja. Bella's here. I don't know. I think I said hi to Bella already, but if I didn't, hello. And just like anything else, your um, long-term prepping or storing, you want to make sure you're using the best of the best. So if there's any discoloration or insect bites or anything like that, you don't really want to use those leaves. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So just as an example, Yesterday, I worked on cutting all my onion tops down, and I went ahead and dehydrated those, and just super simple stuff. So those onion tops I can use in soups or stews, or I could put it in some cream cheese like you would do cheese and chives. Just trying to think outside of the box and get as many things put together as I possibly can. And you can do it too, along with me if you'd like.
Bella says, I passed out last night. <laughs> Everybody's saying hello. Are you ready for a new intro? Of course, always. I love your intros, Steve. You do such a good job. So once we get our jars full, then we can start filling it up with some vodka. And then we'll go ahead and let that sit and steep for six to eight weeks. And you don't want to, like, from what I've learned, you don't really want to smash these leaves down completely. You just want them loosely in there. I hear an echo. I hope you guys can't hear that. Trying to keep up with the chat. And I have to say, if Mark and um, Gray are still listening, I'm sorry. I miscommunicated. Um, I set my wife for noon, and I should have set it for 1 o'clock. Um, because they usually stay on for a couple of hours. So I messed that up. So I'll have to fix that for next Tincture Tuesday. Now, when I went out to my mint garden, I actually harvest quite a bit. And the reason I did that is because not only do I want to make a tincture, but I also want to dehydrate some of these leaves. So I'll have a tincture on hand and then I'll have dry leaves on hand as well. Um, and that will just give me that will just give me more options later down the road if I want to make something else with those dry leaves. Is anybody else doing this along with me? All right, I think that's pretty good. Just checking the chat again. Hello, Eric. How are you doing? Good to see you. Hello, David P. Be charming. Hello. Moonlight Gypsy, me too. That's why I started this, so we can learn together. Yeah, herbs and wild edibles are really beneficial for everyone. You're writing it down. I have everything I need. Awesome. I'm on lunch break. Hello, Christopher. Thanks for coming in. Oh, um, in the description, I wrote um, everything in there that tinctures are used for. Now, what you can do is, I don't have a tincture bottle out yet but you can get a tincture bottle and as soon as this is extracted and you let it sit for six to eight weeks you would put it in you would strain it out and put it in your tincture and mint is really good for a lot of things um, mostly it's known for digestive health you just want to fill this vodka and cover go to the top and cover all the way up so it's good for digestive, any um, stomach issues. But the reason I do it and I like it is because I suffer from anxiety. And mint is very calming if you have anxiety and PTSD. It's a, a relaxant. So you could take um, your dropper, your medicine dropper bottle, and take a dropper full of that. And that will help calm you down really quick, or at least it does for me. Yeah, you can do, um, Sarah at the Big Blue House Homestead says you can use peppermint um, and rub on your temples and it soothes headaches. It helps me if I, like with the rest of this 
mint leaf, what I'll do is um, dehydrate it and I can use it for later use and make teas. And um, it really helps with migraines for me. It helps with headaches, um, menstrual cramps. There's all kinds of stuff. Like I said, if you look in the description box, I just listed all kinds of things down there. There you go. Emily L's listing stuff. Okay. <laughs> I think she copied and pasted my description. Tennessee Tactical, hello and welcome. Yeah, anxiety is a big issue for me. And like in a stressful situation, I definitely want to have something like this on hand. So if something does happen, I have a go-to. <laughs> well, let's get rid of this. Now, because this is sitting in a cabinet and a dark cabinet for six to eight weeks, I am just going to write right onto my jar um, so I know exactly when I made this. And then I don't even know what today's date is. The 15th. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and put this in a dark cabinet. And every day I'll just open the cabinet up and give it a shake and make sure that every part of these leaves are getting some alcohol on it. <laughs> That's okay, Emily. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Tennessee Tactical. So I'm going to go ahead and I put in a cabinet that I open up every single day. So when I see it, I can take it down and... Um, Go ahead and shake it. The other one I have right now in there is lilac tincture. And like I said, I just open this cabinet, give it a shake, and then just put it right back up there. And then that way I know I'm not going to forget. Yes, Tennessee Tactical. Really simple, quick, easy stuff to do. Um, all it does, the most time consuming is actually like going out and harvesting it and washing it and get it in the inside. That's, and then, you know, it's one, once you get it put together, all you have to do is leave it and you're good to go. I know this is just supposed to be Tincture Tuesday, but since I have y'all here, I might as well just throw all this mint into my dehydrator. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. And this part, and I'll turn that off. This part is pretty simple. I don't remove the leaves from the stem. I'll just throw them in there. And then once they're dehydrated out, I'll go ahead and remove those stems. It's just easier for me to do it that way instead of standing here removing leaves for 10 minutes or whatever. But all of these are super simple, easy, quick things to do. Make sure your trays are lined up. I was dehydrating the onion tops last night and I didn't have one of my trays lined up. Got fuzz from my shirt on there. What's everybody saying? Sarah says, tinctures are great, easy to make, and full of beneficial goodies. Yes, I agree. And I went ahead and off camera, you didn't see, but I took some of these sprigs of tea and just threw it in my um, teapot over there so it'll be ready to brew here in a little bit. I'll be able to sip on some tea. I usually drink a cup of tea, a cup of mint tea every evening. It just helps me relax and feel better. It calms me down. So I usually do that a little bit after dinner time and then also because it aids in digestion. 
um, it really helps me. And like I said, it really calms me. So after dinner is a good time for me. It winds me down, get me ready to go to sleep. And that's it. See how simple and easy that is? Just turn on your dehydrator, and we want to make sure this is on the lowest setting possible, and that's 95 for herbs. And the cool thing about the dehydrator, when you have one that goes all the way down to 95, if none of you have dehydrated before, if you set it too high, the herbs will start turning brown. Um, they'll lose all their color. But when you dehydrate, at a really low and slow temperature, your herbs stay green for a lot longer. Get this water cleaned up. But this is super simple, it's easy, anybody can do it. Um, and following along with somebody, I think it makes it easier. And having people in the chat to talk to, I just think it's a lot funner. And hopefully you all pick up this trait with me and learn how to stock an apothecary cabinet. See what everybody's saying in the chat. Everybody's saying hi today to everybody, hello. Oh, Harvey says mint is awesome. Yes, mint spreads like crazy. Um, I actually have, I don't even know what it was, like maybe an old tin wagon or something. And it was broken down and tossed to the side by my mother-in-law. And she ended up, um, it lost the legs on it or the wheels or whatever. So it was laying on the ground and she ended up starting to fill that wagon with all the fire ashes from her fire. So it's been sitting there for years and years and years. And I was trying to debate what to do with all this wood ash or how to get rid of it and everything. Well, instead, one year I decided to plant herbs in there or plant mint in there. And I'm really glad I did because now my mint is just thriving. It's huge. I just threw it right in there with the ashes and it is like the best soil that I could ever use <laughs> for the mint. Um, it does die back off. It dies off here in Ohio. I'm not sure um, other places it can grow year round, but I know it does die off here. Hello, frugal mama. Thanks for coming in. Ginger Ninja says, Sarah, the chocolate mint you gave me, I've already dried a bunch and started about 15 other plants to give out. Plus, just harvest a bunch to make tinctures with this morning. It is blooming. That is awesome, Ginger Ninja. I think the chocolate mint is by far my favorite now. Um, I didn't get mine from Sarah. She had blessed me with enough stuff um, with seeds and things like that. So I was able to get my hands on some chocolate mint locally but it has got to be the favorite my favorite mint tea it just tastes like a peppermint patty it is wonderful heritage heart homestead i'm so sorry about your spearmint i watched your video the other day and i felt so bad so heritage heart homestead did a video and she went out to get um spearmint and that's not what she ended up with but kind of made my heart sad how much mint do you put in the jar? It just depends. Um, I mean, I'm not counting leaves or anything, but I'm not smashing the mint leaves down either. You just fill the jar up um, as full as you can go without smushing everything down. Yes, Brent and Farms, it does ch taste like chocolate. And I was really skeptical. Like the first time I brewed, um, which was this year, I brewed some chocolate mint. I was like, there's no way this is going to taste like chocolate and mint, but it does. It tastes like chocolate. I bet you are annoyed about it, Heritage Heart Homestead. <laughs> it's annoying. That makes it even more annoying, I think. Hey, Moonface5, how are you doing? Good afternoon. 
<laughs> I'm so jealous you girls are all close to each other. We got 24 people in here. That's awesome. I hope you're all hitting the thumbs up for me. You're welcome, Lady Hammer. <laughs> There's the hubby. <laughs> I make him drink the tea at night, too. <laughs> but he's enjoying it. He really likes the, mint, uh, the chocolate mint tea, too. He says that's his favorite now as well. Harvey Black says hello. I think he left. It smells so good in here with that dehydrator going, you guys. It just smells like so much mint. It's clearing out my sinuses. <laughs> moon phase five. I'm jealous too. I want to move south. Somebody needs to move near me. <laughs> Um, the way I do it, Lady Hammer, is I just take a sprig of, I'll just go out there and cut a sprig of uh, mint off, and I just fill my tea kettle up and throw that sprig into the tea kettle. That's how I do it. Some people just put the leaves in a coffee cup and then get their hot water and then pour it over top of the leaves, but... I don't know. This is just the way I do it. Yes, mint is good for sinuses. And I forgot about that until I started smelling it in the dehydrator. <laughs> hey, Stuart. I don't know how I missed you. I missed you somehow. How are you doing? No, he has not scared me through the window anymore lately. Thank goodness. That was horrible. <laughs> he tried to give me a heart attack that night. Jeez. But I'm glad it was entertaining for you, Dr. Prepper. Oh, no, you could definitely make um, iced tea out of it, Lady Hammer. I do. I personally, I don't mind it, whether it's hot or cool. Um, but my husband, he doesn't like iced tea at all. He'd rather drink it hot. But, yeah, it's really good. Yes, Sarah is correct. If you use the dry mint, you will need to strain it or use a tea ball. It brews like regular black tea. Hey, Ark Wildman. How you doing? I ain't no doctor here. <laughs> You're more of a doctor than me, Ark. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too, Shadow, Shadow Dancer. Use a diffuser in your coffee cup. <laughs> yeah, I could just picture you, Dr. Prepper, sitting behind the computer screen, just laughing your butt off at me while I thought I was getting murdered or something, screaming my head off. <laughs> Moon Phase 5 says, I've eaten the mint leaves after brewing. So I was out um, looking in my garden the other day, and I have, like, big, huge shoots of mullein popping up. Um, a couple of them have flowered, just a couple flowers on there, so I'm really excited. I cannot wait until that flowers. I'll start harvesting some of those flowers. <laughs> Heritage Heart Home said, it was hilarious, though. You guys had to admit, you were scared for me for a minute there until you realized what was going on, right? Just a little bit.
once I learn how to harvest mint seeds later, Hammer, I'm going to harvest some of them chocolate mint. <laughs> yeah. Um, tea balls are pretty easy to find. I have one as well. I need to learn more about all the different plants that can be used for medical purposes in my area. That scream was terrifying. I know it hurt my throat. <laughs> I screamed so loud. <laughs> um, Moonchild, did you ever get that app that I was talking about? The um, picture of this app? <laughs> Moon phase, I was informed what happened before seeing the video. So you didn't get shocked because I told you beforehand. <laughs> My stevia plant is getting huge. It's from last year. I thought it was dead. It was dying off, but it didn't die. It was doing it. It was just the roots were still good, but the top had died off. So I'm super excited. It's like two inches tall now. It's getting really big leaves. So I'll be harvesting off of my stevia plant soon too. And hopefully um, I went ahead and took a couple starts off of those and put them in another planter. So I'm hoping those will take off as well. Yeah, you can buy seeds. I believe you can buy seeds, Lady Hammer. I'm not sure. I've never, I'm, I'm sure you could though. I've just never looked for them online before. Sarah, did you get yours from a nursery or did you buy seeds? Oh, that's a good idea. Ginger Ninja says, I've used pantyhose to put tea leaves in to make tea while camping. They were clean, of course. <laughs> I'd hope so. <laughs> but when you don't have anything else to steep with, it works. Yeah, that's awesome. I just drink it too, Harvey. <laughs> My face is priceless. The plants that are medical would be a must for me to grow. I'm learning from y'all every day. Yeah, Tennessee Tactical, and that was my goal this year. My goal was focusing on an actual medical herbal garden, and that's what I did. I'm super excited. It's still growing. It's not, like, huge or anything yet. But most of the herbs that I did plant in the garden, I grew all from seed by myself. So I'm super proud of myself and just really excited that I actually was able to do it. Um, and same thing. I've learned from everybody off of here. Sarah at the Big Blue House Homestead was a huge help. Ark Wildman has been a huge help. Okay, Sarah says she bought the plant. But I'm sure there's somebody online that sells mint seed, uh, chocolate mint seeds. Root stock should be available. Oh, okay. Heritage Heart Homesteads asking Sarah where did she find it? Yes, the app is called Picture This. Excuse me. And um, the cool thing about picture this is you can just continue using the free trial. It'll keep popping up asking me to make a purchase and you can just say continue with free trial. But um, I found out too, like when I'm really far away from the house, I can't get, um, it says, I don't have internet and it says um, identification failed. Well, instead of just closing out of it because it failed, you can actually add it to your garden. There'll be a little tab that says my garden and everything you take a picture of, you can put it in that library that says my garden. And then later on, when you come back to the house or wherever you have internet, you can click on that picture and then it'll identify it then. Hey, Firefly Farm, how are you doing? Thanks for coming in. 
Oh, really? Ginger Ninja says the chocolate mint is a hybrid of the orange mint. Hmm, that's interesting. I saw a lie where a guy opened the window, grabbed something off the sill, and closed the window, and it was, I think it was green out first. Never found out who it was or what was taken, I guess. Oh, that's creepy. That would freak me out, too. Yeah, that's where I went, Lady Hammer. I went to a nursery and got mine. And thankfully, well, I guess it wasn't thankfully, but the mint, chocolate mint that I got, it was dying. So I got it like 70% off. So it was awesome. Hey, Keto Mama, how are you doing? Thanks for coming in. We kept telling him to turn around. He thought we were messing with him. Oh, that's so creepy. Hey, Keto Licious, how you doing? Thanks for coming in. I would be freaked out, especially after like going back and watching your live and seeing that. Ooh, that'd be scary. Thank you, Gemma. Hello and welcome. You shared me out. I appreciate that. Ugh, that gives me the weeby jeebies. See, like where the computer is in the kitchen, I have like a window right in front of me. That's the front window. And I'm in a trailer and what everybody, if nobody's seen the video, it's still up. It was on a live stream. Um, I don't even remember. It was an April Fool's video and I was trying to get my husband. I love you too, Gemma. I was trying to get my husband for April Fool's and I always do every year. And he always forgets about April Fool's. Well, this year... I was on a live stream and he remembered and he snuck out the back door of our trailer and it was pitch black out. It was like nine 30 or 10 o'clock at night and he snuck around and he came to this front window that's in front of me. And I'm looking at the screen, reading the chat, talking to people. And next thing I see is some face just sticking in the window and it just scared the living daylights out of me. I, I screamed out a blood curdling scream. And it was funny, too, because I have another window right on the other side of me. So I kind of seen, I don't know what I seen. It was white is what I thought it was. Anyways, it looked like something white walked past the window. So I got up and opened the back door to see what it was, and I didn't see anything. So I sat back down, and then his face was right there, and I just screamed. It was horrible. But if anybody wants to laugh, that video is still up. It's April Fool's live stream or something like that. Hey, Lady Hammer, thank you. Lady Hammer joined me as a new member. That is awesome. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Klingon Princess, I feel the same way. I am compelled to rescue dying plants from businesses. I took some from the bank and brought Christmas cactus to replace it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Ginger Ninja, she screamed bloody murder. I did. <laughs> Yeah, it was like one of, oh, it was way later than that. You're right, Heritage Heart Homestead. It was like one o'clock in the morning or something like that. Oh, hey, Mark, how you doing? Yes, Ketolicious, I can see you. How are you doing? Thank you for coming in. Can you hear me okay? She scared the daylights out of all of us watching the live. I know, that's too bad I couldn't see all of you jump when I jumped and go back and watch it. <laughs> good, I'm glad to know that you're doing good, Keto Wishes. So yeah, good times, good times. You never know what's gonna happen on a live. Especially during a home study. <laughs> My house is full of mint smell right now. Mint from the tea, mint from the dehydrator. I almost dropped my phone. <laughs> I do the same thing from stores. I buy the ones that look like no one else will buy as a challenge to get it to bounce back. That's awesome. 
Such good people. You know you got a good person if they're trying to save plants. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Keto wishes. I hope he recovers well. And <laughs> I don't know. You might want to ask Mark that over at Rolling Homestead Klingon Princess. Who has a cure for pepper in the eye? I'm dehydrating jalapenos and rub my eye. Oh. I think Mark's advice would be go stick your head under cold water in the bathtub. <laughs> you know what I did yesterday? So once the sun went down and it started cooling off a little bit, I got one of those um, misters, whatever. I don't know what they're called. It's like a water bottle with a hose on it and you mist the plants with it. But I mixed up some hot peppers, some cayenne peppers and stuff, a bunch of different hot peppers. I grinded those up with some soapy water, and I think that's it. Yeah, so, oh, and some peroxide. Mix that all together, and I went outside to spray my brassicas, like um, my cabbage and stuff, to make sure that none of the bugs were eating them. And it was not windy at all, all day. Even when I walked out there, it wasn't windy. But as soon as I pressed that sprayer, the wind blew and it went right in my face. It went in my nose, in my mouth. I was like, oh, I couldn't breathe. I was out there coughing, it was horrible. And my mouth was on fire for at least a couple hours last night. It was horrible. But I'm a weakling. I don't do very, like the hottest pepper to me is like serrano and cayenne. That's really hot to me. But it was not fun in my nose or in my mouth last night. And that is one of my other klutzy moments. I'm always a klutz. <laughs> yep, only water rinse. Heritage Heart Homesteads agrees. Yeah, Ginger Ninja, I still do it with the animals. Actually, speaking of which, <laughs> so today I was out there harvesting my mint, getting it ready for this live. Here's some milk in your eye. <laughs> hey, Tiger454, good morning. How are you doing? Milk doesn't work for me in the mouth wise. It may help with the eye. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I'm out there harvesting mint and I could hear the traffic like a white ways down the road honking and squealing and just making all kinds of chaos. So I took my herb basket that I was using and I walked up to the driveway. I walked up to the road to see what was going on and I just seen this clumsy black blob running down the middle of the yellow line. And I'm like, what is that? I'm sitting there and the sun's out and I'm looking and I'm what is that? I'm trying to figure out what it looks like. And it looks like a moose, like a baby moose when they first start trying to walk and they're all clumsy and their hooves are looking all weird as they're trying to pick them up and everything. That's what it looked like. And it kept getting closer and closer and all these cars were honking and stuff. And it finally it's close enough and it's a baby calf. And I'm like, what the heck? So this baby calf is running down the middle of the yellow line and there's cars backed up forever honking and squealing their engines and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I come back into the yard real quick and I grab like a whole handful of grass. And I go back to the middle of the road. I'm like trying to coax this baby calf to come into the yard. And it walks right up to me, sniffs my hand, sniffs, sniffs the grass. And it's like, nope. And it ran around me and just continued down the road. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. So I got my husband up and I'm like, Come on, there's a baby calf on the loose. So he gets up and we're walking all down the road looking for it. It was crazy. It was a crazy adventurous morning. Hey, Life Adventures in Keto, how's it going? And then, um, so we walked down to the neighbors. It's quite a ways when you're walking. It's probably like a half a mile to the next house. And 
of course the calf is gone we can't find it but some vehicle a lady had pulled into the driveway and she's like did you see that calf and i was like yeah she was like it ended up on this other my friend's property and she says it's over there she's like i'm gonna try to go track the owner down and i'll be back and she was like but keep your eye out because there's a total of four of them <laughs> i was like oh my goodness so we went hunting for cows this morning <laughs> hey pat for homestead how you doing we got 28 people in here i don't know um later on we ended up giving up i came home and cooked breakfast and um we uh searched the neighborhood for a little bit come home made the breakfast and as i'm making breakfast the guy that owns the cows he came down on a four-wheeler and an off-roader um he was on the off-roader and i think it was his son or maybe a brother that was on the four-wheeler and they were like have you seen the cows and i said nope the last time i seen them was you know half hour ago or whatever so i don't know i never got an update or anything if they found the cows hopefully they did but that's a lot of cows i guess the one i seen he was obviously the one that took off down the road and then the other three they took up off the hill into the woods so i have a feeling he's gonna have a hard time catching them and bringing them home <laughs> tennessee tactical i know a story of my life i do have so many loose animals I should be a pro. That's why I told my husband. I was like, man, we could have had a beef cow. I could have hid that thing. No, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But I was like, I should have a bucket of feed, sweet feed next to my front door. So when this happens and my neighbor's animals are loose or my animals are loose, I can just grab my bucket of feed and run. Just catching up on the chat. We have cows get loose around here all the time. <laughs> Our animals are always loose. It's either the pigs or the hogs or something. Or the hogs or the cattle or something. Lost cows are hard to find. We, um, last summer, one of my neighbors had a, um, I felt so bad too because it was a fair cow. Real pretty, um, it was, I think it was a Hereford. Yeah, it was a real pretty Hereford. And their son was raising it for the show, for the, we have a, it's called the biggest little fair in the world. And it's called the Hartford Fair. And they were planning on showing that cow in the fair. And that boy worked so hard with that cow. And it got loose. And I think it was loose for like over a month. And it was gone for so long that, it was hard to get back. It was like turned wild and it was just going into everybody's everybody's cornfields. It was just everywhere. <laughs> you had to lead a horse back one time. I got caught up last night watching. Um, I don't even know whose channel it was. But it was really interesting and I really liked it. And I ended up watching like five or six videos until I fell asleep. But it was about a husband and wife that live in Canada somewhere. I can't remember now. But it's where all the wild horses are. And they actually rescue like um, foals, like baby horses. I love baby horses. And they go out there and they rescue them and stuff uh if their mom has abandoned them or, you know, a stallion has chased off their mom and they actually go out there and rescue them and bring them home and uh, nurse them back to health and stuff. I loved it. Yes. A standby bucket for the exact scenario. Yes. Tennessee tactical. Where is the beef on today's people? And that's a funny thing too, because the girl, that was like, I don't know who she was. She was just following the cows with her van or whatever she was driving. But she was like chasing the cows down with her vehicle. And she was like, I was like, well, they're gone now. I don't know where they're at. And she's like, well, I called the sheriff's office. And I'm like, oh, Lord. 
<laughs> she's like, so if the sheriff comes out, flag him down, let him know that at the last place we saw him or in this area. And I'm just thinking like, what is the sheriff going to do? What are they going to do? They're not going to get out of their vehicle and wrangle some cattle. <laughs> oh, thank you, Gemma. You always make me feel good. We have, we keep having cats show up eating my chicken, cat, chickens and cat food. Oh, see, and that's the thing, like, we live out in the country, so, like, I don't know, these city people, they come out and they, the last cat, it hasn't, it's been a while, knock on wood, but the last cat we had dropped off, they just literally tossed it out the window. They didn't even take the time to stop and drop it off. Oh, that tastes good. But they're always dropping off animals here. Last time our pigs got out a feed bucket with feed didn't help. They knew they were free and refused to go back in the fence. That's why they are no longer here. Well, the, the thing with my hogs, they're so used to me. They're I'm in the pen with them like every day. If not every day, every other day. They're really tame. Um, they really like their home, but every once in a while when they get out, um, they won't listen to my husband <laughs> and he gets so mad because they won't listen to him. But if I go out there and I start screaming at them to go home, I just tell them, go home, go home, get home. And they'll go right back to their pen 90% of the time. If they can't find a hole to get back in or the gate, you know, is locked and we have, we have to have time to open it up to get them back in there, then they'll just keep running around the property. But if I tell them to get home, they normally do. But it drives my husband nuts that they won't listen to him. Hey, TH2, welcome. Oh yeah, Mark. All right, you have a good day at work. Be safe. Our ducks got out one time, went down to the neighbors, and she's like a crazy cat neighbor. She has like this, which she don't make any sense. She lied. She had to have, but she has like this outdoor, um, I don't know. It's like this outdoor pen, like a dog kennel or something like that. And she keeps all her, all these stray cats in there. Any cat that shows up that's stray, she'll put in there and she'll feed them and water them and everything. And they've got play stuff in there. And she had gotten a hold of me. I don't know how she found my number, but she got a hold of me and my ducks had went down there. And she says, you need to come get your ducks. They're all eating my cat food. And so me and Barrett drive down there and she has the ducks in the kennel with the cats and the ducks are eating the cat food. And I'm like, well, whose fault's that? <laughs> it's funny. Our sheriff has four wheelers and they will help. Oh, that's awesome, Lady Hammer. Where are you at? Our sheriff's department does not have four wheelers. A sheriff is animal control here. It could happen. They know all the farmers' cows on the freeway grass when they get out. Oh, that's awesome. I'm trying to catch up in the chat. I talk too much. <laughs> oh, what did I miss? Hey, keto mama. I'm coming over soon to watch the video you've done for Seattle. Um, hey, Rage in the Cage. How are you doing? It's good to see you. You have quite a bit of wild mint in Alberta. That's awesome. I love mint. Horseradish, too, and asparagus. I've never found wild asparagus. I do have asparagus on the property, but I've planted it all myself. I wish I could come across the patch of wild asparagus. I can eat that stuff all day, every day. Hey, Man Life Warriors, how are you doing? Thanks for coming in. We're just chit chatting. I'm sipping on my mint tea here. Ugh. I actually cooled down a little bit here 
finally, and the humidity is better today. But it was like every time I walked out the front door for the last three days, it was like a haze because it was so hot and humid. Take your breath away as soon as you open the door. How do you say it differently? I know it's spelled with a K. How do you say it differently? <laughs> I'm sorry if I offended you. I say names wrong all the time. And if I can't say your name, I just won't say it. Because <laughs> I don't want to show any offense to anybody. Sarah is an official YouTube greeter today. Woohoo! She's a good greeter. We used to raise pigs for kids 4-H club. I have given mouth to mouth to newborn pigs to help them get started breathing. It's awesome. I love piglets. I cannot imagine living here without my pigs. Although my husband thinks differently. <laughs> Sarah says, I'm trying. Hey, Wickshire Project. Thanks for coming in. Hello and welcome. Yeah, it's been a human here too. <laughs> Jess, I'm always offended. Or is it offensive? One of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness all right you guys well I've been on here for about an hour it's time for me to get back in the garden and see what else I can find and harvest and see what I can bring to you what's Thursday I'm doing dehydration um, you can look at my schedule on my community tab and check out my schedule but Thursday, I'll be doing some dehydration. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing yet, um, depending on what I can find out in the yard or in the garden. But I'll let you know a couple of days ahead of time. So if you want to dehydrate with me, you can. So, but I'm going to let you all get back to your gardening or doing whatever you have to do today. And I'm going to get back out to mine. And I hope you all stay happy, healthy, and safe. And thank you again for all coming out to support me. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a blessed day. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.